It was a hot day in mid-July that we embarked on our summer adventure in the Spanish peaks of Montana. Part of the Madison Range of southwest Montana, the Spanish peaks are a rugged, isolated massif of Precambrian metamorphic rock thrust up along the Spanish Peaks Fault. The snowpack had been dangerously low over the past winter. Spring and early summer of 2000 were hot and dry, the driest it was said in over 50 years. The wildfires in the west, here's the latest. At least 65 major fires are still burning. Almost one million acres are up in smoke. More than 20,000 firefighters, military and civilian, are working on the fire lines. These NASA satellite pictures show the smoke from the intense fires now burning in and around the Montana-Idaho... Forests and grasslands combusted like parched hay fields sprinkled with a little gasoline. The West was burning up in the worst fire season in nearly a century. I remember waking in the middle of the night in the broad Gallatin Valley, eyes stinging, the pungent smell of wood smoke filling my nostrils, and a subtle queasiness in my stomach, all symptoms of an organism in an out-of-balance environment. The acrid fumes permeated every room in every home, and relief was nearly impossible to find. This is a story about a diverse group of friends who took a respite from the inhospitable Gallatin Valley and ventured high into the cool alpine ether of the Madison Range to find some fresh air and to ski the blaze. Blaze Mountain was always legendary among early modern telemark skiers in Montana, those of the era beginning in the late 1960s and early 70s. It was a hearty culture of pinheads, as they called themselves, who skied on skinny skis with aluminum edges or no edges at all, leather boots and three-pin bindings. In the days of 60-40 cloth parkas that would turn to armor plating if they got wet in freezing temperatures, and surplus wool pants from the Army Navy store. We were a motley gang of young adventurers on the front end of the outdoor technology revolution. I had my eye on the blaze for many years, but other adventures took precedence, until the hot summer of 2000, when we had a very good reason to seek out the cool alpine snowfield. I looked at old photos I had taken of Blaze Mountain years ago from different locations in the Spanish Peaks reviewed the seven and a half minute quads from the area and talked to friends who had skied the blaze. As a group, we finalized our plan and assembled our gear, including Gore-Tex parkas and plastic telly boots, though I still had my double leathers. We sharpened our steel edges and headed for the mountains. The blaze is a classic summer snowfield on the northwest face of Blaze Mountain in the Lee Metcalf Wilderness of Montana, where a shallow couloir retains snow for much of the summer. The snow remnant persists throughout the year due to a unique combination of slope aspect and a linear geologic weakness or softer layer within the three billion year old metamorphic rock that has been exploited by thousands of years of the erosive power of rain, snow, and ice. From a distance, the lingering swath of snow resembles an axe-inflicted tree marking called a blaze used to mark woodland trails. Or perhaps it resembles the thin white blaze marking on the face of a horse. There is some disagreement as to how the mountain got its name. However, the United States Geological Survey states in a 1930 document that Blaze Mountain is so named because the mountain is marked with a white strip from the snow in a narrow draw on its western exposure which does not melt during the summer. From the Turner Ranch, formerly known as the Flying D, looking up Spanish Creek Canyon, the view is one of the most wild and beautiful anywhere, and the blaze is prominent in that breathtaking scene. The participants in this adventure were Bob Denis, a marketing executive recently transplanted to Montana from a wilderness of another kind called Chicago. Angie Mangles, a graphic designer who lives to ski and hike in the mountains of Montana. Alan and Andrea Bow, two newcomers from the plains of Nebraska, along for their first backpacking trip, minus the skis. Kathy Wiedelspach, another graphic designer, along for inspiration, not skiing. Paola Fajer, a physical therapist, yoga instructor, and avid outdoors woman. Dave Hahn, 
a Yellowstone Park woodworker and experienced backcountry skier, the only Blaze veteran in the group. Bev Dawson, an outdoor equipment specialist who really came along to show us all how to ski the Blaze. And myself, a geologist filmmaker, looking for a good excuse to call this work. From the trailhead, we followed Spanish Creek for about four miles, wending our way through tall grass and sage meadows, sprinkled with bright yellow sunflowers, pink sticky geraniums, and purple lupin, the sound of the rambling Spanish Creek in the background. Always before us loomed Blaze Mountain, beckoning us to visit the mystical summer snowfield on its flank. One had to stop periodically to gaze at the object of our desire and marvel at the anomalous swath of snow cutting from the very summit of the mountain until it disappeared behind the ridgeline. Numerous stream crossings became interesting at times. Most were traversed across rustic log bridges, rough hewn by Forest Service trail crews, but occasionally we had to ford the stream on stepping stones. If a 50 pound pack maneuvers a little off kilter on one of these delicate crossings, the consequences can be trying. Alan showed a healthy good nature after filling his boots with the refreshing mountain water.
Eventually we veered off the main Spanish Creek Trail and began to climb switchbacks up the piles of quaternary landslide debris eroded from the high peaks in recent geologic time to the base of Blaze Mountain. After a long day on the trail carrying the extra weight of skis and ski boots, the serene sparkling glacial tarn where we camped was a welcome sight. We dropped our packs, made camp, and commenced to relax, rehydrate, and restore calories in preparation for the early morning climb to the summit. Morning dawned calm and quiet, and everything seemed peaceful in our neck of the woods. The valley below, however, was filled with an ocean of acrid smoke from other burning forests where the scene was not so calm. After a quick breakfast of power bars and coffee, we donned our packs with skis attached began to climb a huge boulder field on the north flank of Blaze Mountain. As we hopped across the cold, crystalline mountain fragments, one couldn't help but notice the layers and swirls in the boulders beneath our feet. We labored across some of the oldest rocks in North America, Precambrian metamorphic basement rocks nearly three billion years old. In the reverie of a geologist as he loses himself in the meditation of physical exertion, the mind travels to tropical rainforests, ancient oceans, volcanoes, and catastrophic landslides that obliterated this very spot over billions of years. And the ruins of those ecosystems from ages past were buried one upon the other until the oldest debris was buried so deep that the heat from the mantle and weight from above cooked and compressed the sediments into a new crystalline rock devoid of its previous character. These are the layered gneisses and schists beneath our feet. Then a mere 65 million years ago, a great compression from the west, induced by the collision of the Pacific Plate and the North American Plate, caused the uplift of huge blocks of this crystalline metamorphic rock to form the mountains that seem so permanent today. We gained about 2,300 feet of elevation from 5.30 a.m. to around 8 o'clock in the morning as we slowly toiled toward the summit of Blaze Mountain. Each time we gazed toward the snowfield, a different and more enchanting primordial scene would unfold. The beauty of the morning light, the contraction of leg muscles, and lungs expanding with rarefied mountain air all combined to create a physical and mental euphoria that can only be experienced in the alpine environment. One by one we reached the snowfield, each at our own pace and with our own thoughts.
The snow-filled couloir begins about 100 feet below the summit and to the south. We relaxed for a while on the east side of the blaze, enjoying the early morning sun as we waited for the snowfield to soften. The surface of the snow melts during the day, creating sun cups or little dished out ripples on the snow surface. Then at night, near freezing temperatures harden the snow into a concrete like consistency. We were not in any hurry to challenge the steep, icy morning slopes. Eventually, we all scrambled to the summit to take in the spectacular views and to read the register. Many mountain summits in the Rockies have registers or small canisters within the summit rocks where climbers can record their successful climbs on bits of weathered paper. These registers become a history of visitors to the top of a given peak. A little food and water, a little rest, and the work of ultraviolet rays to soften the snow, and we were ready to tackle the blaze. Bob, the only snowboarder in the group, was the first to descend the snow field. He needed to return to Bozeman that day to keep an appointment, and found the snow surface to be yet a little too unforgiving. Most of us waited about another hour before we strapped on our skis for the giddy ride down the mountain.
Bye bye, Blaze. Bye, Blaze. Thank you, Blaze. You've been so good. So good. <laughs> we'll come back when you got more stuff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>